We launched this episode with an intimate interview with National Book Award recipient Robin Costa Lewis. We had a chance to speak with Robin about her collection of poetry, Voyage of the Sable Venus, and her incredible life journey into poetry. Poetry was not always part of Robin's life. In fact, early on in academics, she shied away from poetry, and for good reason. Unfortunately, there isn't enough poetry in the schools, right? I think if anyone, if I had taken more poetry classes, then I would have probably thought about it because it was, it was a love of mine all my life. But I do remember in high school, I think I have a little trauma about it. I remember in high school, my teacher had us recite a poem and from, you know, by memory, and I recited mine, and she was a horribly racist person, and she said, can you tap dance? Do you like watermelon? That was in AP English in Los Angeles in 1979, and I didn't write poetry again. And now a fantastically economical way where I can take on these very weighty issues and make it palpable and even delicious, even if it's complicated. The title poem in her poetry book, Voyage of the Sable Venus, is about titles, titles regarding women and art over thousands of years. I came across this painting, Voyage of the Sable Venus, and it's a heinous image. Um, but what predictably so, it's 18th century. But what really caught my ear rather than my eye was the title, Voyage of the Sable Venus. And I started to think, have I ever seen sable, something adjectival like sable, which is dark, and Venus, something that represents beauty in the same title? And of course the answer was no, because of the history of Western art. And so then I just started getting very curious about titles. I think subconsciously was this incredible historical confession of our history in terms of race relations and gender relations in the Western world, you know, which was curious. And the structure of Voyage of the Sable Venus is simply unedited titles from pieces of art, brilliant and beautiful and haunting. So the long poem is 79 pages and it's, it's comprised com entirely of the titles of artwork or the descriptions of artwork. And so I took these thousands upon thousands of titles and then somehow in my completely obsessive way um, reworked them to create this story over 79 pages of what has taken place in Western art, but only using the titles themselves. And then eventually there was some part of me that was like, just let history tell its tale, right? If you just shut up, if you can learn to be a little bit quiet for once, you know, the titles will tell the story and you just have to find it. Robin's work draws a line not only between gender and identity, but between beauty and hate. Also true for me about the project is, it's a meditation on hate and beauty, right? And the intersection of those two things. Because what I couldn't believe is how long we've been hating each other. And, and not only that, how long we've been hating each other and enjoying that we've been hating on each other. And so if you have a negative thought or a negative emotion, that neg negativity should be immediately examined and corrected. Her work continues to reflect what it means to be a woman, especially a black woman, but it also reflects what it means to simply be, gender aside. First of all, I think that identity of any kind is very fluid, like who we were when we were five and who we are when we were 11. It was really Maybe important to me in my book to have so many different kinds of cultures um, put into play. So it's like just now. we have these so-called ideas and ideals, right, models of what does it mean to be a woman, so with regard to girls, but also what does it mean to be a man? I mean, men, men, are hurting just as much as women are hurting just in a deeply quiet and silenced way. So I personally feel for all of us. I don't, I, you know, I'm, 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 I very much care about the identities of women and the health and mental health of women and girls without doubt. Robin is passionate about helping us see the pressure society places not only on young women, but upon little girls and little boys. I think girls have a hard time in our society. I just saw a beauty show of some six-year-old who was dressed like a stripper on the TV in the hotel room. Why we do this to our children, I will never know. I don't know, but I think it sets us up for incredible and profound sadness. But I think we do it to children of, of both, if not all genders. And it might be that gender is the problem, that we are so fixated on 
people being a certain way in the world. Robin is a poet who offers not only inspiration, but encouragement to other writers. So my advice to anybody who wants to write is to read everything. You learn, it, it's such a direct, unmediated way of learning what writing is. If you really pay attention, I'll never forget, I was 16 maybe, 17, when Toni Morrison's, uh, who won the Nobel, her novel came out, Tar Baby, and I stayed up and I read it all night within like seven hours. Robin won the National Book Award in Poetry, a prestigious award, and she shares a humble approach to receiving it. And so how did I feel? I'm still kind of in the galaxies trying to figure out how it feels. I'm honored, I'm deeply honored, of course. I just hope I've done a good job and I've made, I've given my readers something to cherish and that is of service. Okay, that was so great, so inspiring to sit down with Robin and really talk about her process in poetry and how she has been inspired and how she inspires others.